Hi, my name's James Gaunt and I'm here with Sam Wilson. In this video recorded earlier this year, we're going to talk to you about a media wiki skin called WMAU because it was developed for and is used by Wikimedia Australia's website. The WMAU skin was developed by Sam Wilson and Caddy Brain and went live in 2021. Since then, it has been tweaked here and there to meet our needs. Anyone can install it on their own wiki and we'll show you how you can turn your wiki from something like this to this. I'll hand over to Sam now to talk a bit about his work on the skin, and then I'll give you a bit of a tour around how I've been using it, adding events and blog posts to the WMAU website. Hello everyone, I'm Sam Wilson. I've been looking after the Wikimedia Australia website for the last five or six years. The website has been in existence since 2008, and of course it's built on MediaWiki, the software we use for all the wikis. And in, uh, about 2018, I joined the Wikimedia Australia committee and we decided to redesign the website to make it a bit more user-friendly. What we can see here is the Wikimedia Australia website in 2011, as it looked then, using the monobook skin. And it went through a few iterations after this, but basically it retained the, the familiar sidebar and, and top tab structure that we, that we know and love so well. So in about 2017-18, we started a redesign and we ended up with something that looks like this. There were a bunch of other things we went through uh, b before this. In about 2015, we set up a WordPress site with the idea that there would be a separate blog and that news could be posted there. And it was completely separate from the wiki and Eventually, after a year or two, it wasn't really updated. There were only about seven blog posts in it, and it really wasn't working. So part of the, the restructuring was to move the, the few blog posts from that blog into the wiki and then redesign the wiki. So I think the, the crucial part of that, the, the, the real decision there, was to not have to migrate all of the content to another platform. One of the reasons we wanted to not move to a, a different platform was that we had a, a large number of pages already on the wiki and we didn't want to have to go through and, and migrate them to a different platform to WordPress or to something else. Not all of them, in fact, at the time, a, a minority were um, news type pages or posts that had like a publication date and um, would have fit neatly into a different system. So there's about a thousand pages now. And uh, at the time, we, yeah, we wanted to just change how the site looked, but not have to teach anyone other editing skills or other software. And not only not have to set up anything else on our web server, but we could actually uninstall WordPress. Around the same time, we uninstalled Civi CRM as well to lighten the, the load on the sysadmins um, and just cleaned up a few other things and really focused on the public wiki that you can see here. Um, and we also have a separate committee only wiki, which is pretty much the same thing. So yeah, the, basically the redesign technically is just a new skin. It's called the WMAU skin. Um, and it's of course open source and available to anyone to use. And the, the, the basic design of it was to really put the content um, up, you know, front and center and, and make it easy to see and not get distracted by all of the navigation and editing tools. So James is going to go through more of the details of this, but you can see here that I'm currently logged in. And so we've moved all of the editing and administration links to this pop-out side drawer that appears and you can navigate to things. And, and even in here, this isn't all of the available links from uh, the normal toolbox and top tabs and personal URLs and, and all of those different things. We've really only kept the necessary things. And, you know, we, we have added a few extra things here and we've taken a few things away when they're not used. So it's really trying to simplify it and just slim it down a lot. So I think that's worked reasonably well. So we really wanted to slim down the interface and avoid extra clutter and extra complexity. So we really wanted to simplify the layout and focus on just what was necessary and nothing else. So the main structure is that there's this top bar uh, with a menu and at the end there's the search box. Then the, the, the white area in the middle is uh, the main content area. And at the bottom we have the site logo, a blurb and a series of links. 
all of these menus are modified on the wiki itself via the wmau-config.json file. So this is a custom page that's specific to this skin. So it's a little bit similar to the standard sidebar page that defines what, what appears in the sidebar and some other skins like the foreground skin and, and some others take the sidebar page and use it for effectively what we're doing here. And we did actually start doing that. And then we quickly realized that we wanted more configurable options. So for instance, the about link here is just a simple link. It's just a, a link to the page about. Whereas the next one, the what's on link is a label with a link to a different page. So if we hover over that, we can see that it goes to the events page rather than the what's on page. In the footer menu, there's, there's even more uh, customizability. So for instance, this first item here, it shows um, all of the five available options for any of these links. You can link to an external URL with a particular label and a tooltip. And if you give an icon, then it won't display any of the others. If I scroll to the bottom, you'll see that these are all showing just as icons and then the labels are shown as tooltips, uh, whereas the others uh, are showing as normal links. So all of these links are, are customizable, except the login logout link at the end. That's um, hard coded and always there because um, otherwise that if in an initial install of the skin, you, you have no way of actually logging in. And when you can't log in, you can't access any of the other links. So it's a bit annoying. That's about it for the configurability, although we do have all sorts of plans for the future of making it better. So the other big aspect of the skin is well, it's not so much about the skin, but, but the way we restructured the site is that we switched to using Cargo, a MediaWiki extension, which is really useful for storing structured data about pages. So what Cargo does is it creates a database table and allows you to store what is effectively information from an info box into the database table. And then you can query that anywhere else on the wiki. So if I jump into editing, this, you'll see that there is a blog post template with a, a bunch of attributes. And each of these attributes is saved by Cargo so that we can then call them, query the all of the blog posts and display uh, information about each blog post wherever we want to. So if we jump into editing that template, I won't go into the details of, of what's actually going on here. It, it's all available on mediawiki.org. But interestingly, we can look at the table which is a separate database table for, from the rest of the wiki data. And every time you save a blog post, its metadata is saved into this table. So you can see we've got 107 blog posts and they've got a date and some authors and various other metadata. So if we go back to one of these, you can also see the same metadata via the page values link in the side drawer. And so this is the same, just in a slightly different layout. So that means that on the news page, you can list all of the, or in fact, in this case, the, the most recent 18 blog posts. And so this syntax here is querying the blog post table, and it's not displaying posts that are either draft or hidden and in the future. So this works pretty well and is incredibly flexible. There are some uh, slightly annoying aspects to it, especially around caching of pages. So after you modify any metadata of a page, it doesn't immediately update all pages that use that metadata in a query. So that can be slightly annoying, but it does make for better performance. Okay, so the other main component that we have on the redesigned website is an events listing for coming events. These are sort of similar to blog posts in a way in that they've got a date and a title and we show them in, in an ordered list. But the way we display them is fairly different. They're generally shorter things. They're calling people to be interested and to possibly signing up to something or to linking to a, a, an online workshop. Underneath, they're pretty similar. They're still a cargo table with a bunch of event data saved. So if I jump to the page values of this one, for example, you can see there's a start and an end time, a location, uh, which the location attribute we, we began back in the days of mainly offline meetings. And nowadays with mainly online meetings, 
I, I think we're going to have to do some more work to more easily and correctly categorize things according to region and location. Coordinates uh, means that we can display a map of things. So if we go to the um, event map page, for instance, uh, yes. So showing that, in fact, mostly these days we have online events. It was that we would have more offline events and so that we ha would have nice maps and, and show things. If I jump back to an older, an older event, for example, so each event gets a map with a pin in the location that it's to be held. But the other thing we can do is download an iCalendar file for these. So that means that you can download it and add it to your calendar and you'll have all of the event details in your calendar. The more useful aspect to that is if I go back to uh, the event map where there's a link. The other aspect of having all of the events in a, in a database like this is that we can have this URL here, uh, slash events.ics, which people can then subscribe to in Google Calendar or, or wherever else they use events. And that way, um, all of the events will be kept in their calendar and always up to date. And this URL shows all coming events and all events from the last two months. It's limited to the last two months because otherwise the event calendar just gets bigger and bigger and bigger and slower to load. And most people don't care about particularly old things. So that's a really useful way to, to get event data out uh, of the website. Uh, iCalendar is another uh, feature of um, the Cargo extension. So another uh, part of both blog posts and events um, is the metadata also gets exposed in open graph format. So that gets used when you share a link from the website on social media. It can specify things like um, which image to use, what description text to use, and, and other things like that. So by default, it would use the site logo, but you can override that and use a particular uh, logo for the event or for the blog post. So that's sort of the, the, the current state of, of the Wikimedia Australia Wiki. And it's certainly a, a big jump ahead of where it used to be, but we've got a whole bunch of plans about how to make it better. So a few things that uh, I've been working on lately are RSS feeds, so that you can subscribe to feeds for recent news and various other things, and better uh, ways to enter the data. So at the moment, we can edit a page and we can edit the, the template and all of its metadata. We also have the page forms extension installed, which means you can edit the same page via a custom form. So that's what we're looking at here. So there's, there's the first three fields and, and a bunch of the help text above it are about uh, handling time zones. So there's a bit of complexity there that hopefully we're going we're gonna to get into and we're going to figure out better ways of recording times and talking about times and making that a lot simpler. The other things like the coordinates I was mentioning earlier, you can click on a map or you can look up an address. Uh, and it will jump the map to the to that spot, and you can you can put a pin in it. The other part of the events template and the form is that after an event has happened, we can put in information about uh, what happened, how many people came, uh, the cost, and uh, whatever else we want to. And so for like editathons, we put in uh, specific editing metrics and and other info like that, and it just means that everything gets stored together in one place and then can be queried and, and aggregated later on if need be. To go back to the time zone issue, uh, the reason we have a number of different ways of dealing with this is that we often have events. Uh, well, th th this doesn't really apply to on online events so much because people can join from wherever. But when you have an event in person, you want the time that's displayed to be the local time for that event. But that's not true of all events. So we have to have a system that can work with events that happen in particular places at particular times, also events that are available to anyone, but we want to advertise them at, in particular times. But we also have things like Wikimania and other international things, ECAP events, that we don't necessarily want to say that they are happening at a specific time, we want to show it in the user's local time. So uh, we're doing some work about how to, how to make that easier. And hopefully that'll be done pretty soon.
So another aspect that we want to improve is on blog posts and news articles, we're thinking of better ways of engaging readers and making it easier for them to leave comments. So at the moment, we've got a discuss this page link, and that's just a link to the talk page, which isn't used very much. And if it is used, it doesn't indicate anything here to make it obvious that there is a discussion going on. So one possibility is that we'll list the contents of the talk page at the bottom here and have a box for entering new comments. And I think probably some better systems of trying to get people to log in uh, or, or make it easier to create accounts or log in via external accounts. The details of that, I think we're, we're, we're still figuring out. Hi, I'm James, and I'm going to give you a bit of a tour of the Wikimedia Australia website. So as Sam has kind of gone over, it's, it's pretty basic, standard, nice website. You've got your logos, you've got your links, search bar content on the front page and yeah, social media links and other links down the bottom. So this is how it looks if someone is logged out. So there's no like uh, menu for editing the page anywhere. If we go to this page here, there's no little editing links anywhere. But if we log in, now we've got the editing toolbar for logged in users. And we've now got the option to edit the page or edit in source. And so this is kind of nice because it means that if you're one of the managers of the page, if you're one of the contributors, then you can kind of jump in and fix things really quickly. But if you're just a, a viewer of the page, um, if you're just a visitor, then it just looks like a normal website. But yeah, so what's really cool, I think, about the front page is how we've customized it. So it's got some standard text, but um, I'll just go into edit source. And where are we? We've kind of got this card here that was like a green logo, which is on the left hand side. And then we've got these upcoming events, which are pulled from our events page, our events calendar, which is on the right hand side. And so they're pretty customizable, like we've made it so you only see three upcoming events. But yeah, with that card with the Craig Franklin Award, which is currently there, we've made that so we will manually update it. And down the bottom of that, we've got the latest news section, and that's pulling out blog posts or news posts that we've put on the, the news section. And we've also set that to show the three most current ones. If we go back to front page, you can kind of see that, yeah, there it's pulled out the three events. It's got uh, this article or this, this link and some links here that you can just leave it. These will update themselves as we post new news articles and the events will update themselves, but we can customize what's in this area. Uh, we used to do it a little bit different. We used to actually have lots of these cards spread out down the page and, uh, at different sizes, but because we're actually really uh, using our blog, uh, our news area, a lot more recently. It just kind of makes sense for it to automatically update itself. So that's the front page. As I mentioned, all the other pages are just like a normal web page. There's lots of links. Just like a wiki, you've got blue links. Uh, if it was going to a page that didn't exist, it'd be a red link, um, but we don't have any of those. The what's on page is where all of our events are. So uh, recently, I went and added a whole bunch of events for the rest of the year. So that's why it's so long. And that's kind of pulling out everything from our events calendar that's upcoming. Uh, you can see where it says past events. That's where it collects all of the previous events that have been held. It's also showing any event, really. But yeah, as we go down, the list is quite long with uh, Wikimedia Australia has had a lot of events in the past, well, since 2009, I guess. But yeah, another cool thing, I guess, about the events section is that you do have a calendar view. So you can see uh, Wikimania ran for a week or almost a week uh, recently. And we've got some upcoming events here. And clicking on any of these will take us to their individual event pages where there's links, tells you about what time it is, what time zone it's in, 
as an image or that. But yeah, as Sam kind of mentioned as well, you can subscribe to the calendar by uh, clicking on this link and adding it to your uh, personal calendar. Every time there's an event uh, added to our calendar, it'll push it to, to your calendar so you can see it, which is really handy. So to add an event, you just click the create a new event button and it takes you to this page. So we want to create an event called Superstars of STEM Sydney. So we create a new event and that takes us to this form. And because Australia has so many time zones, we kind of have got this uh, little table here to make sure we get it all right. So I want to make an event for the 6th of October, 2023. It's going to end on the 6th of October as well. And it starts at 10 a.m. And now we need to make sure we've got the right time zone. I think it is still AEST -E that day. Let's paste that in there and it will finish at 3 p.m. And then for the time zone for display, so this is when the event will happen, but we maybe we'd want it to display in a different time zone. If it was an event in Singapore, uh, we might put the event time in for Singapore, but then we want it to display in uh, the time for Sydney or whatever it is. And normally we're just dealing with different Australian time zones, but uh, we go for number 10. This is why we've got this here. Pretty handy. As Sam mentioned, there is work to improve this because it can be a bit confusing, but we've tried it a couple of different ways and that's even more confusing. So this is kind of the best uh, way to do it at the moment. So then we'd check our region. So if it's a national, international event, um, but we want New South Wales, it's going to be at the University of Sydney. And we could put in the coordinates. Let's see if that can get it from that. Yeah, well, there we go. So it's put in the coordinates for University of Sydney. Uh, I'd probably double check this later to make sure I actually have got the exact address. And then we'd put it in, normally we'd put an Eventbrite link or somewhere where people could register. If it's online, we'd put a Zoom link in there. Currently there isn't actually a Eventbrite link to go up. So we'll come back and edit that later. And I'm just gonna chuck in a description, but I'm gonna copy and paste it from somewhere else. And I'm going to put in a quick description, but I'm going to build it up later on. So we can select a keyword. As you can see here, it says that that'll add a category to the bottom of the event. Uh, we can add an image. So what's cool about the Wikimedia Australia website is that It'll actually pull images from commons if we've got one. So just as an example, I am going to pull one without the file prefix. I'm just going to chuck in an image of the University of Sydney. And yeah, this area will be completed at a later date. Number of attendees, and that's really good for metrics. Uh, summary, created a page. You know, there's so few people using this website. I don't know if we really need that, but anyway. And then, yeah, just click on save page. And there we go. So it's got the image, it's got the name. Uh, the short description is here, just slightly larger text. It's got the uh, larger description. And as I mentioned, we've got the, the region here is New South Wales. And you can see when the previous most recent uh, event was in New South Wales. And you can also see the categories down here. So it's automatically added events in 2023 and events in New South Wales. And we had pr also put in ourselves that it was an editathon. So there you go. Um, but yeah, I did mention that, you know, this is a pretty bare bones description. We do want to update it at some point with um, more details and um, probably a, a way for people to book in. So we can do that by either editing the form uh, and that'll take us back to the previous screen. Um, but I normally would just jump into edit source. So editing with source editor. Um, yeah, that's kind of pretty easy breezy. You can kind of get a better idea of how the um, page is laid out too. And once you're done, you just click save. And yeah, so if we go to what's on, which takes us to the event page, let's see, when was it? The 6th of October. So it's not there yet, but that's okay. We can just 
purge the cache. And there we go, it's added it here. And if it was one of the next events coming up, it would also add itself to the front page because we do have that uh, little template that's pulling the most recent events here. So that is the events section. Um, I mentioned that we have these cards on the front page. You've, you can kind of see a few here. So we just kind of use them to cleanly display different links sometimes if we just want information on a page. Uh, our projects and partners page has a few different uh, ways to display this. So you've got the, the two cards, then we've got the three cards, we've got the one big card. Um, this is all pretty customizable. I will say that uh, editing it in Visual Editor is a, is a nightmare. That's what it looks like. So I would normally just edit it in source and the, it is quite easy. Just link cards, link one, title one, body one, image one. And again, pulling images from commons or from our website if we've uploaded them there. So I'll just show you the news page now. As Sam has already showed you this, this shows our most recent blog posts or news updates that we've done, all using the blog post template. Uh, you can see August has been pretty busy. We've been posting a lot. And if we go down to the news archive, we can see a list of every single blog post we've we've made. So there's been quite a lot in the last couple of years, but in 2015 there was quite a few and then there was a bit of a gap for a while. So they're all collected there. And those can be backdated as well. You can create a, a blog post with a, a date in the future or a date in the past and it will put it in the correct order. Putting a date in the future will schedule it so it won't actually appear here uh, even if you were to purge the page a few times, it won't appear uh, up until that date. Um, and for me, I'm in Melbourne and I find that it normally will appear about after midday. And as mentioned as well before, the front page is kind of using the same template and just displaying the three most recent news posts. Uh, whereas on our news page, it's showing the most uh, recent 18. And also it's not showing any that are tagged with uh, draft or as hidden in the mode section. And I'll just very quickly show you a bit about that. So if I go to this blog post that I posted recently and I'm gonna go to edit source and you can see it's got the mode here and you have the option to put in draft, featured or hidden. And putting in draft would mean that, well, I'll just show you. So now the, there's this little message here to say that the post is a draft. And if we go back to the news page, it probably, probably will have disappeared. Yeah, and so you can see that that blog post has actually now disappeared from here because it has been marked as draft. So I will go back and undo that. And you can see you've got the standard blog post things, you've got the date, the image, which is taking from commons. I've chosen to hide the banner. So the, the banner image is this one here. And that's what's displayed in the card on the in the news section. So sometimes I, I like to leave it at the top, but it's, it tends to kind of crop weirdly, um, especially if you're using different size screens. There is a way to kind of make it so that it is kind of centered, but uh, some images it will just never look good so I tend to hide it. You've got the author name which I will talk about a bit more in a moment. Keywords which are just like categories I tend to kind of add them in later and um, but it would be a good idea to get in the habit of using them. Um, description is that kind of short description at the top of the page and then we've got the article itself so in source editor it just really just looks like a normal Wikipedia page but we've also got visual editor of course and there we go that actually looks quite nice lovely blue links of course I've got some images in this gallery and if we wanted to edit the blog post template here we can again date author's name description uh, image and yeah we have mode 
and you could just type in draft or, or whatever if you wanted to. So I will just save that. Okay. So yeah, another really interesting thing that I like about this is the author link. So clicking on that will take you to the user page. Okay, so as you can see, my username is slightly different to the my actual name. So the name that I was using as an author on the blog post, but we did a re little redirect so that sorted that out. So on my user page, I've got a bit about me. Uh, we added a, a little authority control thing just for a bit of fun. And it's also listing all of my blog posts. Um, actually, because I've written so many, uh, we, we limited it. So it's not actually displaying them all. But there you go. To create a new blog page, we used to have at the bottom a link where you could, just like how you can create an event, you click create a new blog page. But because it was really just me making these pages, we kind of removed it so that people who weren't logged in wouldn't get confused and think that they could add new pages. Uh, so the easiest way to do it is actually just to change the URL and create something that doesn't exist. So yeah, tucking in a title that doesn't exist. Uh, we'll take you to this page, asking you to create a page, just like Wikipedia. And here we are. It does default to source editor, but you can switch to visual editor. And I will just do that. But at the moment, this is just like a normal wiki page. There's nothing to make it appear on the news section. So we need to go to insert template and then insert the blog post template. And then, yeah, first thing we want to do is add the date. And then a quick description. And I'll leave keywords blank, but I do want to add an image. So I'm just going to go to commons and get one. I'll tell it not to hide the banner, so that's okay. So we'll leave that. And I'm not going to make it a draft. Um, normally I'll do that in mode anyway. Okay, so that's all I need. Oh, author. And yeah, myself as the author. All right, so yeah, otherwise it's just like creating a page. Uh, any page on I don't know, WordPress or even Visual Editor Wiki. Add in some links to cool stuff. And what else do we want to do? Add some links to some other pages. And let's add an image as well. It's fun. Cool. And then we can drag that around. It's just like doing any anything in Visual Editor on, on Wikipedia. We can jump into the source editor if you prefer. So I normally like to add no table of contents to stop a table of contents appearing if there's lots of headings. But yeah, do what you want. And once you're ready to publish, just click save page. And there we go. It's got the heading image. It's, you know, as I said, it's a bit uh, cropped weirdly. It's an incredibly large image by the looks of it. But it's also probably because of the, the size of my screen. And when we go to the news section, we might have to purge. There we go. It appears there. Um, and if for whatever reason we've made a mistake, we can just go in and re-edit it. So in Visual Editor or in source editor, I'm just going to 
make it hidden page and that should remove it from the new section there we go it's gone yeah so that's those are kind of my two favorite things about this skin I mean it looks beautiful and adding articles is really easy adding events is really easy and there's great customization for, to make it the front page just display exactly what you want I also like how we were able to add icons to all of our social media as well as just a few more links as well to other things so the skin that we've developed for Wikimedia Australia is open source and available for anyone to use you can download it from mediawiki.org and it is currently being used on a few different websites around the world. And it's available on uh, some wiki farms like Mirahaze. And if anyone does try it and or, or even uh, wants to get involved on the Wikimedia Australia wiki, um, if you find any bugs, you can jump over to Fabricator and we would love to hear about anything that can be improved. Just create a bug on the Wikimedia Australia uh, project on Fabricator and we'll um, we'll try and see to it. Uh, you can see we're currently working on uh, the time zone issue. Thanks for watching. If you'd like to find out more about using the WMAU skin, take a look at the links in the video description or go to mediawiki.org and search WMAU where you'll find the WMAU skin page and contact details for Sam Wilson. Alternatively, head to the Wikimedia Australia website at wikimedia.org.au and you can contact the WMAU team directly.